Dan unzipped his girlfriend's dress and asked her to seduce a man on the side. Parker was very confused and asked him why. It turns out that Dan brought his good friend Lynch to ski with him. But because the tickets were too expensive, he didn't want to pay to enter the ski resort. And this man happens to be the lift attendant. If Park seduces him and convinces him, they will definitely be able to enter the ski resort for free. Parker heard her boyfriend's shameless request and immediately agreed. She walks up to Cody and asks him for a cigarette as a sign of intimacy. Then she told Cody that she and her two sisters had come to ski, but they happened to leave their wallets and cell phones at home. She hopes that Cody will do them a favor and let them in. Then maybe they could have a drink together tonight. Cody, who had been single for over a decade, was immediately interested. He agreed to her request without saying a word. But when Parker returned with her boyfriend Dan, Cody was stunned, so the three of them rushed to the free cable car. The three of them tried to use it again at night for a free ride. They turned back down the mountain and wanted to take a night tour of the snowy mountain. But they were stopped by Cody this time. Cody said that the ski resort was closing soon. However, Dan threatened him and said that if Cody didn't let them in, they would report Cody for letting them take the cable car for free during the day. Cody didn't want to lose his job so he had to let them go on the cable car again. The three of them were very happy to get on the cable car, but they did not know that this would be the worst decision of their lives. Not long after the ski resort colleagues came to take over the shift. Before Cody left, he told him that there were still three people on the gondola. When the three of them came down, the gates could be closed. His colleague waited for a while and then saw three people skiing down the mountain. So he thought there was no one on the mountain and closed the gate so he could go home and watch TV. But then the three people on the mountain and the cable car suddenly stopped in midair. They thought at first that the circuit had tripped and would soon be restored until the lights on the snowy mountain went out one after another. Only then did they realize that something was wrong. At that moment Parker remembered that it was Sunday and this ski resort is only open on weekends. Which means that if they were really left here, they would be stuck on the lift until the next weekend when the slopes open for business. In desperation, the three men called out for help and hoped that there is someone around to hear their screams. But they shouted for a long time and no one answered. After a long time, snow suddenly fell in the night sky. With the arrival of the snowstorm, the biting wind was like a sword cutting through the faces of three people. They huddled together but were still frowning, shivering. At that moment, a white light came from the night sky. A snowplow appeared at their feet. This gave hope to the desperate three. They called out to the driver. But the howling cold wind completely drowned out their voices. At this time, the driver received the news of the return of the team. Is ready to reverse back to go. The three men saw this and hurriedly threw their goggles and skis down. And hoped that this would attract the attention of the driver. But the driver, who was focused on backing up, didn't notice what had fallen in front of him. He just simply drove away. The time came in the early morning. The temperature was still dropping in the night. A thick layer of ice had formed on the gondola. Frostbite began to appear on Parker's face. Her boyfriend, who didn't want to sit around and die, was ready to save himself. Dan decided to jump off the gondola to get help despite the advice of his friends and Parker. The man took a deep breath and jumped straight down from a height of several dancing meters. When he got up, he found that his leg bone had pierced his knee. It turns out Dan and his girlfriend and friend were trapped on a ski lift. Dan jumped off the gondola in order to get out as soon as possible to seek help, but he still underestimated the height of the jump. Unable to move, he asked the two people on the gondola not to jump down. Parker had no choice but to take off the scarf to stop his bleeding, but the scarf was blown into the trees by the wind. Good thing Dan's best friend Lynch suddenly found that they can follow the cable overhead to climb to the iron pillar and then climb down the ladder on the post. Lynch finished and was ready to do something to try to save Lynch. But his feet just stepped on the railing and almost fell. He had no choice but to retreat back to sit in the cable car. They cleared the ice from the gondola. But then Dan looked up from the snow and saw a vicious wolf. Luckily, Parker dropped his skis in time to scare the wolf away. Soon Lynch started his second attempt. He grabbed the cable and slowly moved forward. But when Lynch looked at the ground, he could only stop in utter terror. Then he quickly retreated back to the cable car. Parker was confused and asked Lynch what was going on. He could only grab Parker and tell her not to look down. It turned out that the wolf that had just appeared had not been scared away by them. Instead, the wolf called for more companions. A pack of hungry wolves surrounded Dan. Desperate, Dan could only scream. Parker was so scared that he cried when he saw this scene. Dan instantly became a meal for the wolves. The two of them couldn't accept this reality and Saturday on the cable car. Their bodies were numbed by the cold. Lynch looked at the blood on his hand and realized that it had just been cut while climbing the cable. 
At that moment, Parker next to him suddenly spoke up. She blamed Lynch for not stopping Dan from jumping off, but she didn't stop Dan either because Dan won't listen to Parker, who has only been his girlfriend for a year. Dan wouldn't even listen to his friends he's known since birth. The two of them were still in mourning, but the snowstorm was still falling. To keep their bodies warm, they had to hug each other to keep warm. They also kept talking to stay awake. Finally it was dawn and they had spent a long night. There was still no one in sight on the ski slopes. Parker woke up to find her hands frowning on the railing. The woman's hands were frowning to the railing and she couldn't move them. She found that the flesh was stuck to the railing with a little effort. Parker had to clench her teeth and pull her hand out. With great force, her palm can already see the bone at this point. And that's not all. The frostbite on Parker's face was getting worse. They will be frowning to death if they continue to sit on the cable car. But the two of them were trapped in the freezing cold at a height of more than 10 meters and could not move. How can they escape? A whole night had passed. Both of them were already hungry and cold. They would die if they Saturday on the gondola any longer. Lynch decided to follow the same plan as yesterday. He got back on his feet and climbed up the cable. But then the screws on the cable suddenly came loose. The cable car in the air shaking constantly. But Lynch has no other way to get out of here. He relied on his remaining strength and climbed for it a little. Just then, a dark shadow flashed on the ground. The wolves had returned. They were staring at Lynch from the ground. The wolves were waiting for him to fall and become their breakfast. Lynch took a long time to climb to the second cable car. By now his hands were a bloody mess. Lynch asked Parker to throw him his ski poles so he could have something to defend himself with. Parker reached for his ski poles when he heard this. But the loose screws on the gondola made the whole seat shake with Parker's movement. Parker got the poles but accidentally threw them to the ground. Lynch had no choice but to continue from the second gondola. The wolves on the ground are still on the prowl. This time, however, Lynch climbed forward at a fast pace, ignoring the injuries on his hands. Soon Lynch managed to climb up to the pillar. Then he made his way down the ladder to the ground. But just as it picked up his ski poles, a hungry wolf rushed in and pounced on him. In the confusion, Lynch seized the opportunity to stab the wolf with a stick and scare it away. Then Lynch quickly got on his skis and headed straight down the mountain. But the wolves still won't give up their breakfast. A pack of wolves immediately ran after Lynch in the snow. Parker saw the scene and couldn't do anything. She could only pray that Lynch would make it out alive and call for help. She didn't know how long it would be before night fell again. Luckily, there was no blizzard this night. Parker survived into the morning by sheer force of will. But she sat her day on the gondola for so long without seeing Lynch's return. Parker began to feel lonely and helpless. She looked to the ground. Her boyfriend Dan's body had been completely covered in snow. Parker didn't want to sit on the gondola and wait for death. She wanted to jump onto the snow like Dan. But just as she was moving to the bottom of the gondola, the screws on the gondola suddenly came loose. The entire cable car fell down. The good thing is that the cable car did not fall directly to the ground, but stopped closer to the ground. The cable above her hat was breaking. Parker took a deep breath and adjusted her mind. Then she leapt in a perfect position to land on the snow. But unfortunately, the gondola above her hat fell with her. Parker's leg was crushed, but the desire to survive kept her crawling down the mountain. She didn't have to crawl long before she saw a pool of blood on the ground. Parker was frowning in place. She followed the blood and saw a body in front of her that had been gnawed away. It turns out Lynch didn't get away from the wolves. Lynch couldn't have gone down the hill to get help. Parker glanced to the side. A pair of big, scary eyes were staring at her with interest. Parker was shaking with fear. Luckily, the wolves had had enough to eat and drink, so they didn't turn to attack Parker. Parker slowly moved forward. Once she was completely out of sight of the wolves, she started to roll down the hill at a faster pace. Finally, after her long crawl, Parker made it to the bottom of the hill. But due to her physical exhaustion, Parker immediately collapsed on the side of the road. Luckily, passers be found her in time. That's how she was saved. Parker Saturday frowning in her car. No one knows what she was feeling at that moment. All I can say is that you never know which comes first, tomorrow or an accident. Sometimes people get themselves cute by having fun.